Hi, so as you know, we actually do quite a lot in plastics. Actually, I don't. Our uh, head of polymers division does. Well, Steve. Steve's our uh, Edison Plastics Polymers guy. And we do a lot of work on biopolymers. Now, there's a good reason for biopolymers and the reason we work on them. Uh, traditional petrochemical plastics are uh, not so good for the environment. They do break down after time. UV will rot them, for instance. Time will take its toll. But it does release pretty harmful, harmful chemicals into the environment. And there are, in fact, five gyres around the world. There's the North and South Atlantic gyre, the North and South Pacific uh, Pacific Gyre, the Indian Ocean Gyre, which are basically enormous collections of plastics swirling round and round in the ocean, just poisoning everything. Now, I was having a look at this recently, and I came across a picture, and it always comes into my mind, the picture of a turtle. This turtle had um, crawled into one of those beer can holders and grown, because the holder had um, caught around its body, and it had grown in the shape of a figure of eight with this hideous beer can holder holding it firm. The big problem about these things is once they get into the vi environment, they take centuries. And we thought about that a little bit, and we started thinking about our bioplastic. Now, our bioplastic, if you originally make it, as you know, is incredibly tough. But it has one kind of problem, if you like. I mean, it's only a problem because we need to be able to do other things with it. It's actually a real positive. The problem is, it's thermoset. Once you've moulded it, it's stuck that way until you grind it up and do something else with it. You can't remould it. That's not really a good thing for plastics. For plastics, you want a couple of things out of them. One, to use them really efficiently in just about everything, you want them thermoplastic. That is, once you've made them, you can heat them up and they'll remould. But you also want them to rot away. Now, you don't want them to rot away in time, because it's no good if the thing makes you a plastic bag, you take it out to the rain and all your shopping falls on the floor. But you do want it to rot away in, say, a couple of months or so. So we were working on that using our baseline biopolymer, bio and how can we make it do that? Now, we've actually done something to it where we can tune the rotability of it. So we can tune it from instant rot away to last for a couple of years or so by the way that we play with it. And interestingly enough, as we were looking at that tuning ability of it, it changed it. It changed it from a thermoset to actual thermoplastic. And we thought, Eureka, we had this huge Eureka moment. And we immediately thought of Lego bricks. What could you do if you could replace all the Lego bricks in the world, which is ABS, with our biopolymer that is water resistant, let's say, but would rot away once you chuck it in a uh, bin for a little while. So that's what we looked at. So of course, the next thing you're going to do when you're thinking of replacing Lego bricks is, OK, how does this thing take some colour? And Here's the colours that we used, here's the plastics that we made, and they're beautifully bright coloured. But I'm going to turn you over to Steve now to talk a little bit more about the plastics. Thanks, Rob. OK, so you may remember this is our graphene thermoset plastic, and we fired bullets at it, we tried to stab it, we did a fire test on it. Um, it certainly doesn't behave like a, a thermoplastic. These ones on the other hand, the next stage on this, Rob's uh, explained about the degradability of these things, but sometimes you need something to last quite a while in, in normal atmospheric conditions, water conditions, perspiration conditions, so I'm going to work a bit more on the uh, waterproof, waterproof properties of these plastics. Now we've had um, part of this plastic in a bit of salt water for a couple of weeks and as you can see it's sort of degraded down to a liquid. Uh, that's good uh, but sometimes we need it to make we need to make it last longer as a plastic. So there we go all we used to colour those were these uh, child's paint powders really they're uh, non-toxic so the whole thing is non-toxic still um, and they take on colour quite well the, the base plastic, the base polymer, takes on the colour very well indeed. So there we are, that's where we are so far. I'm personally quite proud about these plastics. People have been trying to cure plastics like this upwards of 150 years. We've got a bioplastic now, which really can take the place of any petrochemical plastics in my view. Um, Rob and I do chemistry slightly different from academia. 
you know, we'll sit down and discuss things, we'll read through papers, get totally confused, come into the lab and just do it, basically. And then we find out afterwards how it's done. But it seems to work quite quickly when you do it in that, that way. Um, this is a lab. You can call your kitchen a lab, you can call your bedroom a lab, your garage a lab. Rob's always uh, had the philosophy that you should go out and, and, and get hands on and try these things and, and hopefully you'll come up with something like it. So um, a good biodegradable plastic, you can, I was going to say you can eat it, I would, I wouldn't encourage anybody else to, but I'm quite confident about it, you can put it on your garden, let it rot down. All that's going to happen is your flowers are going to come up in particular primary colours because that's just the water coming out of here. So I'm pleased with it, I'm fascinated with doing some more work with it and we're bringing you up to date but for now I hope you got something out of it and thanks very much for watching.